What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I wanna to talk about why I purchased the laptop that I got. And obviously you see the title, it's uh, referencing the fact that the MacBook Pro 2018 15 inch just came out. But also there's a bunch of other Windows related products that are just as powerful and sometimes perform better than a MacBook Pro. So you've probably seen all the other videos from Dave Lee, Jonathan Morrison, Marquez Brown Lee, I Justine, Linus Tech Tips, Roberto Blake, CJ Knows Tech, and Max Yurev. And trust me if you run a YouTube search right now you're gonna find there's a crazy amount of people who have done comparisons unboxings reviews and benchmarks for various solutions out there but to give you a little bit of context I'm a web developer I build websites everything I do is with code so for me pretty much any laptops gonna do just fine because in order to code a website you don't need a very powerful laptop or you don't need a very robust computer what you need is something that at least has four gigabytes of RAM ideally eight gigabytes SSD drives are very very good because they're faster so over the years that I've been coding the laptops that I've had have been good enough for what I needed to do so let me run down the line of what I currently have and then I'll go into why I needed to buy something new all right so to start off with first this is the 17 inch MacBook Pro this they do not make anymore it's 17 inches you get a lot of screen real estate and for creators who need to have that screen real estate this is awesome Apple you should bring this laptop back and maybe you might be able to get some better benchmarks if uh, you can spread out some of the tech inside throughout the logic board. 17 inches really good but obviously the tech inside the 17 inch macbook pro is very dated the cpu is uh, i believe it's a sandy bridge it also doesn't have the fastest or most capable graphic solution and even though you could upgrade the ssd and the ram the bottleneck if you're doing anything that's more than coding will be difficult on this machine so that brings me to my next laptop over here this is the 15 inch macbook pro it's a little bit more mobile than the 17 inch and this one i upgraded with 16 gigabytes of uh ram and I put in a faster SSD into it. It still works and it still does well for my um, my work as a coder. Now, beyond that, I also have the MacBook Air. This is the 11-inch uh, MacBook Air. I believe they discontinued this one. And this is great because it's so small. And I've mentioned this in other videos that if you're going to be on the go, if you need to be able to code somewhere where you're not going to have a lot of space, this laptop, this solution right here is really good. But this is a 2012. So just a rundown of the dates, the 17-inch MacBook Pro is a 2011. The 15 inch is also a 2011 and the MacBook Air is a 2012. Now we're going to move on to the uh, other solutions that I got. This one here is a Lenovo laptop. So it's a 2013 I believe. It formerly ran Windows but I took Windows off of this and I put a uh, Linux Mint on this laptop. So this is a dedicated Linux uh, machine right here. Beyond that, this next one, maybe you've heard of it and maybe you haven't. It's going to look like a toy but it's not. This is a Pi Top. This one has Raspberry 3 and it's fully capable in terms of coding and this one just cost a couple hundred bucks so this is really good as well now for coders for web developers for people who are building or designing websites who are just working with code maybe HTML CSS JavaScript PHP and MySQL and maybe WordPress any of these laptops are gonna do fine even though they're older laptops as long as they still work they're gonna do the job but then I started doing YouTube and then I started doing things with Adobe with Premiere trying to learn After Effects and that's when I realized I needed something more powerful and these solutions here are not the best in terms of running robust platforms or programs that require significant resources so that's why I built that machine back there that's a custom built PC and I put in a very fast graphics card I have a 980 Ti Strix graphics card in there it has 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM a hexa-core processor and very fast SSDs so that is great for video editing for working with After Effects for working with any program that's going to require a significant amount of resources and also the case it's a Corsair 750D case so there's plenty of airflow throughout the case itself everything inside stays nice and cool and I also have a uh, liquid cooling solution that's keeping the processor as cool as possible so that's great but there's a problem with that computer and that's that it always stays here always stays within my house and as a freelancer I do work from home so for the most part that's fine but whenever I'm on the go if I'm doing something other than code if I want to edit a video if I want to do something that's gonna require more power again these laptops are not ideal solutions. And the desktop, I'm not gonna be able to pack that up with me. So what did I get? Did I get the MacBook Pro 2018? Did I get the Dell XPS 15 inch laptop? Or did I get something totally different? And again, I spent hours and days 
looking at reviews online, watching videos, going to Reddit, and hearing what experts had to say in terms of the MacBook Pro 2018 versus uh, the Windows-based solutions out there. But one thing that struck me is that Apple is known for always having grand announcements of their products. So when the 15-inch MacBook Pro 2018 came out with the new i9 processor and 32 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 RAM that we've all been asking for, I kind of got excited for that because that's what people wanted. But they did it in the silence of the night. There was no great unveiling of the MacBook Pro. There was just an update to the website and I believe a press release and a, maybe a blog post. So that made me think, why would they do that? And even though, as you see, I do have a bunch of uh, Apple computers here, I also have Windows-based computers and a Linux-based computer as well. So that means I don't only work with just one operating system. All right, so this is the moment right here. What did I get? Now, I normally don't do unboxings on this channel, but I'm going to try to do uh, an unboxing here. Again, this is not a benchmarks video. This is not a side-by-side -side comparison. This is just me sharing my logic and my thought process in terms of buying what I purchased. All right, so are you ready? What do you think I got? Here we go. This is it. If you're familiar with that logo, you're gonna know what this is. It's a big box. This is heavy. This is, it's a big package. All right, so now let's do this unboxing. Again, not a professional unbox over here. So bear with me as I get this done. Taking out my trusty knife so I could unpackage it. All right, so this is what we got. This is an Alienware laptop. All right, so you might be asking yourself, why did I go with Alienware? This is a gaming laptop. And my thought process was, even though over the years, Laptops have always tried to get as thin as possible while also trying to pack in as much power as they can. The problem is that performance will always suffer whenever you have a smaller design. So after doing hours and days of research, I decided that Alienware was gonna be the option that I go for. And it probably doesn't hurt that uh, product placement has always put this in front of my eyes because I do watch the Big Bang Theory on TV and they're always using the Alienware laptops. All right, so let's see how this looks. Because this is not a thin laptop. This is not a low profile laptop. This is, wow, it's big. All right, so this is the Alienware laptop. It's the 15 inch off four. This one is nicely specced out. I chose to get the um, i7 processor in here. And you might be wondering why. Why didn't I go with the i9 processor? Because even with a laptop as thick as this, there's gonna be thermal throttling issue. And you're not gonna get the full performance of an i9 processor out of a laptop, even when the body is a very thick body. It's better to save the i9 processor for the uh, desktop or workstation-based computers. So I got the uh, fastest processor I can get on the i7 line for this. I got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and I put the uh, 512 gigabyte SSD drive in there. I didn't get a secondary drive because what's great about this laptop, it has the ability to enhance it and upgrade it. There's uh, three additional spots inside the computer that I can add SSDs, M.2 drives, or even a larger drive if I want. So I could put in a whole lot of storage here. And this cost a fraction of the price of the brand new MacBook Pro. So let's see how big this is. Wow, this thing is huge. How do you take it out carefully? All right, I wanna make sure I don't mess this up. All right, so this is it. I thought there was a scratch on it already, but no, that was just some of the uh, packaging material. All right, so this is the Alienware 15 inch laptop. That's how thick it is right there. Now in terms of weight, this comes in at about seven and a half pounds, eight pounds, depending on how you have it configured and if you're gonna add more drives into it. But it's not that bad. But now if you take it and compare it to something like the uh, MacBook Air, this thing feels light as a feather. And let's see if I can do a comparison view. Even though the MacBook Air is lighter, I actually kind of feel like this is easier to hold because it's not gonna slide out of my hands as easy. The MacBook Air kind of feels like it's gonna slide because it's so slippery. And I'm pretty sure the uh, newer MacBook Pros are the same. So let's see what else comes in a box. All right, so this is the power supply for it. It's a 240 watt power supply. It's huge. This weighs about a pound and a half by itself. Then you got the instructions and some information about the laptop and some uh, information of where you could follow them online. This is my new mobile solution. What do you think? Again, my thought process was I needed something that's powerful. I needed something with a 
fast processor that can handle Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and anything else I could throw at it. While my desktop computer that I built definitely has the specs for it, again, I need it to be mobile. So this I can grab with me anywhere I need to go and I can work from anywhere with this, which means I could edit my videos, not just code whenever I'm on the go. So hopefully that increases my productivity. Now, another thing, people might be saying, well, you have so many laptops. Isn't that a little bit too much? There's another thought process here. One, you gotta realize those other laptops are older laptops. They still work and I could code on them very well. But again, I cannot edit videos on those uh, laptops. So that's why I decided to get something brand new. But I didn't feel like I wanted to spend nearly $7,000 on a MacBook Pro. And I kind of feel they're gonna come out with a new model next year. A refreshed model with a better cooling solution on the inside that'll be able to handle the processor a little bit better. The 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM is definitely a step up, but the performance is not gonna be the same that you would get in an i9 processor on a desktop. And I looked at the Dell XPS 15 as well, the 9570. And I thought I was going to get that one. That one has a 1050 Ti graphics card, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, very fast SSDs, and also supports the i9 processor. But I wanted maximum performance at an affordable price with upgradability. So that's what led me to this laptop. As you can see in the back, it has really ample cooling solutions. It has a lot of um, airflow in the back, airflow there as well. It comes with almost all the ports you're going to need. Except for one, which is kind of shocking, especially on a laptop that's as big as this. It doesn't have the uh, SD card reader, so that's kind of interesting because this definitely has space that they could have implemented that. But I do have a dongle for that, so that's not a big issue. Other than that, this thing is a complete mobile solution. And again, this one has the i7 processor, the latest generation, eighth generation i7 processor. It has 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and it has a GTX 1070 graphics card. So that's definitely more powerful than the Radeon graphics card inside the MacBook Pro and even more powerful than the graphics card inside of the Dell XPS 15. And this one, again, I can add more storage to it. So upgradability, is easier. So that's it. That's what I'm using now. That's the purchase that I made. And those are some of the reasons why I chose to pick this laptop. And an added benefit is I get a workout with this laptop because again, this is uh, almost eight pounds. And in comparison to some of the other laptops, this is a beast of a computer. This is a nearly workstation class computer in a mobile solution. So I'm gonna be editing my videos on this. I'm gonna be uh, doing some coding on this as well. So the other laptops and even my desktop, I'm gonna turn them into single purpose appliances. Now, what is that? That one's strictly gonna be for video editing. There's gonna be no other applications or pieces of software on that computer. That will ensure that the performance will be fully optimized. For my laptops, the older generation ones, they're just gonna be for coding purposes. The MacBook Air is gonna be more for personal use and things of that nature. This is great because if one system goes bad or if one system gets compromised, it won't impact everything else you're running on that system. And this computer right here, this is gonna be my general purpose overall workstation laptop. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, this was not a benchmark video. This was a video just sharing my thoughts of why I wanted to get this laptop versus the MacBook Pro 2018 or the Dell XPS. What will I get next? I'll get an i9 but it's gonna be for my computer. That way I can maximize the performance of that chip. All right, so hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.